So I want to make a video showing the basic setup of Bolt. And the video after this will actually get into some coding, some programming, but I wanted to go through the basic setup of Bolt. So first thing I want to do is I want to open up the asset store and I'm going to search for Bolt. Now I've already purchased um, and downloaded Bolt, but if you haven't, you'll want to do that here. Um, since this is a new project, I don't have Bolt here. I'm going to import Bolt into my project. As you're installing Bolt, the setup wizard is going to come up. I'm going to press next. And now we have two options here. We got human naming and programmer naming. Now, one of my attractions to Bolt is that it's very similar to C sharp coding in terms of the flow, the way you would construct it. So I'm going to choose programmer naming. Because uh, again, I'm hoping that Bolt is a bridge from having no programmer knowledge to um, programming in C sharp when appropriate. So I'm going to choose programmer and I'm not going to generate this documentation. I'm going to choose next. And now here, this is offering to create custom inspectors. I'm not sure if this is a conflict with the version of Unity that I have. Uh, but if I allow this to generate inspectors, the setup wizard seems to crash. So I'm going to press next and move on. Uh, I then get here for all these assemblies and I'm going to Basically what Bolt is doing is it's going to use, uh, I believe it's using reflection to generate all of the units. Uh, and so you can turn off some of these units if you want, or some of these assemblies rather. Uh, I'm going to leave them all on and just press next. You can also choose what type of variables you'd like uh, Bolt to have access to. I'm going to leave these all on here. If I knew there were some that I didn't need, uh, say like touch, I'm, I'm not going to be doing any touch. I guess I could turn that off like so. Uh, but I'm going to leave the rest of those on. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and press generate. And then Bolt's going to process through the entire code base and pull out all the units um, that we can use later in our flow um, and state machines. So now that our setup is complete, uh, you can choose various options to look at your manual and support, but we're just going to close and get started. So I'm going to open up several Bolt windows. I'm going to come up here to Windows, and they're added right here. So what I want first is my graph, and it's going to be my graph window. This is where I'm going to do most of the construction of the code, so to speak. And I'm going to choose to dock that down here, take up eh, something like that. So most of my work is going to get done in here. Um, I'm then going to add in a graph inspector. I'm going to drop that down here below my regular inspector. And so the graph inspector, as you'll see in a, in a minute, will um, give us details about what we've selected in our graph. Uh, it's kind of like what it sounds like. Whereas the, ins the regular inspector tells us stuff about what we've selected in the hierarchy, our graph inspector is telling us about what we've selected in the graph window. The other window that I'm going to open, the last window that I'm going to open, is the variables. And I'm going to dock that here with the graph inspector. The variables window, no big surprise, is where we'll be creating and managing our variables. Uh, you can see there's several options here. We've got graph, object, scene, uh, application, and we've got saved. Um, there's various different scopes for our variables, and we'll get to that at some point here. So now that we've got this window set up, uh, I'm going to use this from time to time. And just in case I mess something up, I'm going to go up here to my layout and I'm going to save this layout. I'm just going to call it Bolt. And that way, if I want to reuse this layout, I have my option here um, in that drop down window. So let's take a little bit closer look at some what, what some of these windows do. Bef uh, in order to do that, we're going to create a flow graph. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to store that in a folder called macros. So in my project here, I'm going to right click, create folder, and I'm going to call this macros. And this is where all my flow uh, graphs and eventually state graphs will go. So I'm going to go into that macros folder and I'm going to go to create again. I'm going to come up to bolt and I'm going to create a flow macro. And I'm just going to call, I'm just going to call it tutorial demo. And you can now see that our graph window over here is now a flow graph and the name of that flow graph is now present. You can also see here that our graph inspector, we're, uh, since nothing is selected, we have information about our, um, the entire graph. We have a title, a summary. We can also add in some control inputs and outputs. We'll get to those later, as well as value inputs and value outputs. You can also now see that the variables, um, some of the more variable options are here. We can select scene or graph. You can notice here that if I press the plus, 
uh, without giving a variable name, it's going to give me this warning and show me it needs a variable name. Uh, so you can type in uh, demo variable, something like that. And then I can choose the type of variable. And we can choose our, our floats, our ints, string, bool, and so on and so forth. And if you dive into some of these other um, options here with that have the arrow next to them, there are a lot of different types of variables we can create. But our most basic ones are offered up at the beginning. So let's look at our flow graph a little bit. The way this flow graph works, all of our work's gonna get done over here. Right now there's nothing on our flow graph. This isn't going to do anything. What we can do is right click and we can choose add unit. And that's gonna bring up our fuzzy finder, which allows us to search through all the various units. And units is just another term for commands, if you will. It's what Bolt calls all the different commands. We can also right click and press A as a shortcut to bring up the fuzzy finder. Now, if I can type anything in here and it's gonna give me um, its best guess as to the units that I'm interested in. And they call it the fuzzy finder because it's not totally literal for what you type in. It is going to be a little smart about what it finds. So that's our flow graph. In our next video, we'll be looking at um, implementing some actions or rather implementing some units to actually do something with our flow graph. And in the next video, we're just gonna create a very simple spinning cube. Maybe we'll get some changing colors uh, just to get the idea and the basics of how these flow graphs work. Thanks for joining, hope that was useful and I'll see you next time.